Thanks everyone for being here. So this is my first Monday series. Um, I started this series back in January and I wanted to do a workshop every month where I talked about something real and practical and something that we could all implement into our life um, at, at any time. So I started this back in January and it has gone pretty well. February was a total technology flop. I even tried to do the workshop over again. It didn't work, um, which, you know, is fine. Uh, but I'm, you know, persevered and keep going and here we are in April now. So that's, that's really, really exciting also. Um, so the topic for April's first Monday workshop is self-care. And this topic was really important to me because it's something that I have been struggling with for years, probably. I have been go, go, go all the time for a long time. I mean, even in my early 20s, I had a day job and then I was going to school at night. And then whenever I was going to school full time, I had an intense relationship at night. And then I was working full time and then I started a business on the side. So I was, I've just always been doing things full time all the time. And I don't know that it takes a toll on me um, energetically. I definitely have a lot of energy and I can do it all, but it definitely takes a toll mentally and emotionally. And for me, that looks like running out of ideas, getting really, really close to burnout, crying in bed at night, you know, like all of these things that we do when we feel totally overwhelmed. And I didn't really know how to fix any of that because I still had all of these things to do. So since arriving to Southeast Asia in November, I have really tried to focus on myself, focus on a manageable schedule of how I spend my time in the office, and trying to figure out how to go from there that's going to really be beneficial to, to my life as a whole. So that's kind of the genesis of where this topic of self-care came from. Um, I also created a workbook that goes along with the workshop. You can download it at climboutofthecubicle.com forward slash first Mondays. And I will be referring to the workbook throughout the, throughout the workshop. So if you have it printed out or if you have it, um, you know, as a PDF, then, then uh, it'll be helpful if you can follow along. So why are we here? Why, why is self-care important? So um, I, I didn't Google the definition of, of self-care by any means, but I feel like self-care is how we literally take care of ourselves. what we do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep ourselves happy and healthy and make sure that we are going along at a smooth pace. Um, I believe that self-care is internal and external. Um, and I think the easiest way for me to describe it is thinking about um, the, most basic, the most basic way possible, like on a hygiene level. You know, like self-care is taking care of your teeth by flossing and brushing your teeth and, you know, staying away from juicy fruit or whatever we do to take care of our teeth. Um, it's been ingrained in us that you have to do this all the time or, you know, you're gross or you're going to have problems or whatever. But, but it's, it's pretty much the most basic level of self-care. You know, I think we've all been in situations where we've had a bad breakup or we've had a bad weekend and there's just something about like, taking a shower and putting on clean clothes that make us feel a thousand percent better. That is self-care. Just doing something for ourselves that's going to help us on the most basic level is absolutely self-care. On a deeper level, which is what I want to talk about today, self-care is taking care of ourselves emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, everything. Um, I think a good example is taking a walk around your neighborhood or around your office building when you're getting really stressed. Taking a walk can be an absolute amazing way to implement self-care into your life and it's simple and it's free and you can do it every single day. So I just wanted to show you the difference between self-care that's automatic in our mind and self-care that you actually, you know, have to maybe think about a little bit more, but they're both absolutely ways that we take care of ourselves. <clears throat> so what I want to focus on today are three things. First, why self-care is important. Second, how to make self-care 
a part of your life. And third, um, tons and tons and tons of ideas of ways that you can make self-care a part of your life. And um, spoiler alert, at the very back of your packet, um, there are over 50 ideas of ways that we can have self-care in our life that are either free or pretty little cost, I think. So again, you can find this worksheet at climbouthecubicle.com forward slash first Mondays, where I have tons and tons of tons of these ideas. Um, before we get started, I want to do a quick introduction of myself. My name is Amber Monaco, and I am currently traveling. I just had to. I just had to look at my notes. I don't know if you saw that. Like, wait, what was my name again? Um, currently traveling the world as a digital nomad, and right now I am in Bali. I've been in Bali six weeks, I guess, at this point, and I love, love, love life in Bali. I never want to leave. I know that's not. That's not practical, but um, I love life here. It's really, really great. Um, before Bali, I was working um, a regular nine to five job. I was living in Washington, DC and working on my business, Climb Out of the Cubicle on the side. Quit my job, sold everything I owned in November, came to Southeast Asia, and I've been traveling around since then. I have been traveling a little bit. Um, Indonesia is my sixth country since November, but um, I think, uh, I think I'm going to stay in Bali for a little while. I started all of this digital nomad stuff because I was so, so bored at work. I was unmotivated. I wasn't mentally stimulated. I was kind of a terrible employee in that way. And I knew that I wanted to make a drastic change for myself. And being the all or nothing person that I am, I decided to just go to the extreme and take the plunge and move to the other side of the world. There's a large expat community in Southeast Asia, especially in Thailand and in Bali. So those are the places that, that I have spent the most time. Um, my business, Climb Out of the Cubicle, helps, every, helps people find their purpose outside of their career. I will never say to you, I think that you should quit your job and move to Bali, but I will say if you are dissatisfied with the way that your life is going, then you need to make some hard decisions and some drastic change in your life. So that's kind of the approach that I have to my business and to my lifestyle. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's get back to why we're all here, which is self-care. Um, <clears throat> I think all of this is really important that we talk about it now because it's something that's never, ever, ever going away. Self-care is going to be something that we have to think about at every single point in our lives. I think it's also something that we've all struggled with from time to time. You get really focused, you get in um, a personal situation, a relationship, or you know some other type of care situation, and taking care of yourself can go out the window very quickly. And I want to make sure that we have the tools in our back pocket to know how to bring it all out whenever we need to take care of ourselves a little bit more. And I also want to talk about self-care because, uh, kind of to piggyback off what I said, but um, it's, uh, it's easy to forget to take care of ourselves. And it's easy to take care of others and to make sure that everyone else is, is doing well. And, and I think that that's a little unfair. I'm going to talk about um, being selfish later and how self-care can be perceived as selfish, which I completely disagree with. But... I think it is easy to forget that we do need to take care of ourselves and we do need to put ourselves first a lot of the times. So having all of these strategies in our back pocket ready to whip out at a moment's notice is going to be, be really great. So in our workbooks, um, we are on page four um, and I want to talk about uh, where we even begin, where we even begin with self-care. So in the workbook, page four, where do we even begin with self-care? Like I said earlier, self-care is the most basic way that we take care of ourselves. And the way that we do that is to be highly self-aware of what we need and what we want and what's happening in our lives. So I have some basic questions that begin on page four that I want you to start thinking about tonight and over the next couple days of to help you get in the mindset of what you need and to make sure that that's happening in your life. 
next. So the first question is, or I guess question is the wrong word, like the phrase that I want you to think about because I want you to kind of fill in the blanks of, at the end of these sentences. The first one is, I love to indulge in, and finish that sentence. The second question or the second phrase is, at the end of the day, one thing I look forward to the most is, and finish that sentence. And, the, and then the third is, the best way for me to relax is. And I'm gonna give you some examples, but I want you to start thinking about um, how these phrases play out in your life. Thinking about what you think is indulgent and delicious and just amazing in your life. Thinking about how you relax, what feels good to relax, what feels stressful, what your life needs to look like for you to relax properly, and then what you look forward to at the end of the day. So for me, I love indulging in chocolate. I love indulging in massages. I love indulging in more chocolate. Those are the things that I really, really love. You might be thinking about a glass of wine. You might be thinking about taking a bubble bath. Those are indulgent things that we can do for ourselves at any moment, in theory, um, to really help us um, reflect back on our self-care practice. At the end of the day, one thing I look forward to is, um, for me, it's calling my sister, taking off my bra, getting into my jam jams, putting on calming music. Those things really help me anticipate the end of the day where the stress is over, all of the expectations are over, and I'm just at home with myself. Something else you might think about is seeing your pet or seeing a partner or making dinner these are things that you look forward to at the end of the day that can really help you um, anticipate what's happening at the end of the stress. The best way for me to relax is, um, and for me, I wrote down being in a silent room, being alone, and when my boundaries are well communicated. So personally for me, I can't relax if I feel like things are coming at me at all different directions. I feel like it's really important for me to communicate with the people in my life to let them know what's happening so that I can take the moments to take care of myself properly. I know a lot of people feel like they can't relax if the dishes aren't done or there's crap on the floor or whatever. If you have an environmental stimuli that's preventing you from fully relaxing, that's okay. You just have to be aware of it so that you can prevent any of those things from happening so that you can really, really get into your self-care practice. I hope that makes sense to everyone. If it doesn't make sense or I'm totally missing the mark on something, please type something into the chat box. So after I... Um, start thinking about the ways that I ended these three phrases. The best way for me to relax is at the end of the day, I look forward to the most, whatever. And then the first one was how I indulge. I start thinking about how I make my self-care practice a priority. And I know this sounds silly, but I really believe the only way to do it is to schedule it in. And I know what you're thinking. I'm not going to schedule in sitting on the couch, having a glass of wine. But I think that you should, or I think that you should consider it highly. If you don't want to physically write it down in your planner, consider, just consider it, just consider it. I personally love scheduling things. I love my planner, I love my iCal, I love that my iCal syncs with my phone. I love scheduling everything, so for me that really, really works. Um, you have to figure out what works for you, but I highly suggest that you literally put it in your planner. You literally write it down that you're going to go get a massage and it's going to take 30 minutes to drive there. That you are doing a nothing weekend and you're turning your phone off and no one's coming over and you're not getting out of your jam jams, you know, whatever it is. Write it, write it down because it's easy to let other people's priorities and other people's expectations take over and prevent you from having the self-care that you need. I wanna talk about one, one myth. 
that self care is um, is selfish, and to say it bluntly, I think that's crap. Um, to elaborate, I think that self care is so important that if you don't allow yourself to have it, then you can't properly take care of any other responsibilities in your life. What I mean by that is if you're not taking care of yourself on a personal level, then you can't take care of your professional responsibilities. If you don't take care of yourself on a personal level, then you can't give what you need to give in your relationships. If you're not taking care of yourself on a personal level, then all of the other responsibilities in your life, such as the mundane things like going to the dentist and getting an oil change and vacuuming and all of those things, those also take a back seat and then things pile up and then it becomes highly overwhelming to even begin. So if you can take care of yourself in the very, very beginning, then I fully believe that all of those other things will just come into your life naturally and at a much easier pace. So if you can take care of yourself just doing the things that you do in your normal life, then I think all of the responsibilities and all the things that we have to do will come much, much easier. So what I want you to do is, what page are we on? What page are we on? Page six. Page six of the workbook. I want you to start thinking about five, six, seven things that you can do to really, really take care of yourself. And I don't want you to overthink it. Write down the first thing that you think of. What is something that you can do to absolutely take care of yourself? Maybe it means getting a manicure. Maybe it means hiring someone to clean your house. Maybe it means signing up for some type of food service, getting your food delivered, blue apron, those CSA boxes now that spring is coming. What is something that you can do in your life that is fully for you, that's going to take care of yourself and make your life much easier? And it can be something totally free. You're going to take a walk every day. You're going to make something delicious for dinner once a week. You're going to whatever. Write down the first few things that you can think of here in the workbook, and then you'll have something to refer to when you get into a situation and you're thinking, man, I really need to do something for myself, but I don't even know where to start. Write down the first few things that come to mind, and then later on, um, There'll be lots and lots of options for you if you need some help brainstorming. What's one thing that everybody wrote down? Joy, what is something that you wrote down? Can you type it in the chat box? Is Joy playing on her phone and not paying attention? Maybe. Dana, is there something that you wrote down? Can you type it in the chat box? Something that you can do? For self care, <gasps> oh, get a new pair of jeans that look good, Dana. I love where your head is at. I love that. Getting a new pair of jeans that make you feel good, that make you look good. It's just, it's something that you can absolutely do for yourself, and it's going to make you feel so amazing on so many different levels. And it's not going to cost a million dollars. It's not going to take five hours out of your life, probably. You know, it's something that you can really do um, to, to just feel good on a ton of different levels. And that's exactly what I'm th talking about. So thank you so, so much for sharing. Um, next, I want to talk about how you create a plan to make self-care a part of your routine. So in... What was last month? March. In March's first Monday workshop, it was all about habits. Habits around how you spend your time and what you do. But the core of that was what a habit actually is. So if you remember, a habit is a trigger, the routine, and then getting a reward. So I gave the example of your phone. 
your phone dings, that's the trigger. You have a routine to mindlessly pick up your phone and look at it. And then the reward is seeing the notification, the text message, the email, you know, Tinder, whatever it is. That's, that's a basic habit. If we can make self-care a basic habit, then it's just going to happen immediately in our lives and we're not going to have to think about it or plan it or write it down or whatever. It's just going to happen. So for example, if you make a habit of getting up from your desk every day at 1030 and walking around, go getting a cup of coffee, go getting a scone, whatever it is, it's just a basic habit. And at like 10, 15, 10, 20, something starts going off in your brain like, oh, it's time. I better, you know, finish up this email, finish up what I'm doing because it's time to stand up, walk around, go get a scone, whatever. If you can just implement these habits in your life, then it'll absolutely help in the self-care world. When you implement a habit like this, you're absolutely just setting yourself up for success. So let me say that again. When you implement a habit of self-care in your life, you're setting yourself up for success. So if you will, I ask, where's my phone? That you get out your phone, you get out your paper planner, and you write something down that you can absolutely do that's just for yourself to make it a habit. Maybe it is getting up from your desk at 1030 and walking around. Maybe it's going for, you know, an afternoon walk. Maybe it's going to bed early. Whatever it is, I'm going to challenge you to put it in your phone, put it on your calendar, <coughs> and make it happen. Just pick a day. Pick a time. Pick a day. Pick a time. And, and I think that it will absolutely, absolutely help you. So what I have done for you in the workbook at the very bottom of page seven I've created a little permission slip for you. Now, we are all adults here, and you don't need my permission to do anything. You don't need your mom's permission to do anything. You need your own permission. You have to give yourself the permission to indulge in this way, to take care of yourself. You have to give yourself permission to make the time, spend whatever resources you need to spend, whether it's financial, or mental bandwidth or whatever it is, but you have to give yourself this permission to go and do the thing that you wanna do. So at the very bottom of page seven, I created this permission slip for you. And I want you to write down what you give yourself the permission to do, when you're going to do it, and then sign and date it. And it's a commitment to yourself. It's a commitment to yourself that you're not going to be selfish. You're going to just take care of yourself. You're going to take care of yourself because you're important and you matter and taking care of yourself matters. So give yourself permission, write it down, put it on your calendar and take care of yourself. If you're still thinking, I don't know. I don't know what to do. It just seems silly. I don't know. Turn to the next page in your workbook, page eight. And here is a whole page of ideas, a whole page of ideas of things that you can do that are totally, totally, totally for self-care. Totally self-care. Um, some of these things are absolutely free. Some of them do require a little bit of money, but they all will help you as we embrace this self-care practice. Some of the things on here I feel like are very simple, like go outside and look at the stars, take a walk, take a bubble bath, write a poem, listen to Taylor Swift. I mean, you can't listen to Taylor Swift and be mad or stressed out. I mean, let's just be honest about the impact that Taylor Swift has on all of us. Those are things that we can do that help us 
relax, implement self-care, but don't cost anything. You know, you can download the Pandora Taylor Swift station and just listen to it all the time. I may, I may have done that. I'm just saying. But this list is, is going to be really, really helpful when you are in a situation where you're thinking about what you want to do, how you want to do it, and then now you already know how to schedule it and make it a part of your daily, daily life. Um, that's about all I have to say. This is a very, pretty short one today. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please type them in the chat now, and I will do my little end spiel, but I want to make sure that I um, answer any questions or comments. So if you have questions or comments, please uh, put them in the chat while I, while I talk about my, my next little spiel. Um, so yes, self-care, it's important. So we've come to the end. I've basically said everything that I want to say. You have a really helpful workbook that you can take with you carried around with you, tear out that page of ideas, cut out the permission slip, put it on your fridge. <clears throat> you can absolutely do this, and I think that it will absolutely impact your life on a highly positive level. Um, <clears throat> I, want you to, I want you to reach out to me in a week. I want you to put it on your calendar for next Monday night to send me an email and let me know how your week went and how you have how you have implemented self-care into your life in any way this week. You can always email me at amber at climbouttofthecubicle.com or you can send me a message on social media. My handles are the Amber Monaco. You can absolutely find me there. I also have a weekly blog that I post on Wednesdays. I have a podcast that goes out every Friday where I talk about things like creativity, and making the most of your life after work. And I think that is really great and helpful and it made the iTunes um, new and noteworthy section. So that's really exciting for me. And next Monday, <clears throat> nope, that's a lie. Next, uh, what am I saying? Next month, the next first Monday will be uh, Monday, May 4th, uh, same time, same place, 8 p.m., uh, here on Zoom. So if you want to get a hold of me, please send me an email uh, at amber at climbouttofthecubicle.com. And otherwise, I will be online on the podcast and on all the social media platforms. So thank you so much for coming. I really, really appreciate it. And if you need anything from me or need more ideas, then please send me an email. So I will see everyone next month. Bye.